Hi, we're at IBC in Amsterdam and have an opportunity to speak once again with Steve Altigen, the president of Verimetrix. Uh, thanks for taking some time to be with us. It's, My pleasure. It's an opportune time uh, to speak with you because of all the dramatic changes that are underway and so much of it in this marketplace has to do with security. So I'd like to begin, Steve, by asking you, uh, we've got the new Movie Labs specs that are uh, enhanced content pro protection specs that are meant to uh, provide recommendations to the studios for um, enforcing security around high value content. It's largely been associated with UHD 4K, uh, but basically the way the specs are set up, it's talking about enhanced content protection for all kinds of content that's deemed at another level of value. Um, so under those circumstances, I'm wondering if you're feeling at this moment that, uh, that the, the, these specs need to be taken really seriously by the marketplace as a benchmark for where we're going. Great question, Fred. Thank you very much. Um, absolutely, these specifications are not just written for UHD content. It is a, a very clear initiative to harmonize the type of security that the content owners and studios uh, would like to see in the future. Um, the advent of over-the-top video services brought quite a bit of vulnerability into the picture when it comes to uh, the delivery of video because now we've gone from what was traditionally a so-called managed service where you were actually providing video services to a consumer and you knew um, which consumer was receiving that video you were in control of that video now we're putting things out on the internet and basically, if you have an internet connection in general, uh, you can find a way to, to get to that content. So it becomes very important that as we're seeing UHD services deployed, uh, number one, that mistakes of the past are not made moving forward in the future, um, because once you let the genie out of the bottle, it's out of the bottle. And so consequently, we're seeing things being mandated that we have been doing for um, more than 10 years, like forensic watermarking, uh, which enables uh, the content owner or the um, pay television um, operator to literally track back a piece of content if it leaks out onto the internet, if it's being pirated, and track it back to the legal last rece legal recipient. On top of that, uh, with um, some of our technology that we have enhanced in uh, the video mark space, the, the watermarking space, it also enables um, an operator or a content owner to combat things like periscope attacks, right? And there was a highly publicized yeah. periscope attack on the Manny Pacquiao fight. Had they used forensic watermarking in, in that type of scenario, it would have been possible to monitor in real time as that content was being put on the internet and define exactly which terminal device was being used to play out that content and then uh, camcorder it and, and shut it down, right? And let's imagine that you know they shut it down just before the KO or just yeah. before the home run in the baseball game or just before the, the deciding goal in the soccer match, then ultimately people are gonna start wandering away from this type of service and understanding that it's actually not legal in the first place, um, but it is not reliable enough to be putting real, true, high value, uh, premium content uh, out on the internet. Now, th this brings to mind the whole idea of a need for an enforcement ecosystem to emerge to make all of this useful. Uh, it, it's great to watermark everything, but <laughs> somebody needs to read it, somebody needs to, to connect the discovery of the pirated material right. um, with the provider of the watermarking, the interpretation of that. 
Um, how do you see this coming together to where it becomes an effective tool? Is, is, do you see progress being made in this direction? There's definitely progress being made. We're working with um, quite a few operators that are actually using uh, the VideoMark product. Um, and, and the monitoring is generally carried out by the content owner or the, the, the pay TV provider. Um, and then VeryMatrix provides a service to uh, be able to, to do real-time uh, watermark detection and potentially um, hand off to uh, the enforcement authorities, uh, be it the local police, be it the service provider themselves. But whatever uh, the service provider defines um, is actually now possible uh, in, in real time uh, to be able to com combat this. So that's one facet of the um, the movie lab specifications that is currently tied to, to UHD, but as you rightly mentioned, it's not just about UHD, it's about securing premium high value content. And there's plenty of premium high value content um, available today that is not necessarily... Uh, well, as, as a matter of fact, all the stuff that's being stolen and promulgated on these Correct. faux websites is, is being just filmed off the screen and, and, and passed out. That brings to mind the, the whole thing with tracking this stuff, which is, uh, you know, gathering the information. And it's, and it's I guess, from, a, from an analytics standpoint, it plays into a broader idea of just how how you're situated in the marketplace with your protection mechanisms at the device level, at the server level. You're you're in a pretty good place to draw a lot of data out. That, that's very true. That's uh, that's a great segue. We we have been doing IPTV security for 11 years, so IPTV security um, is very, very similar to OTT, uh -huh. right? I mean, OTT is via IP. And consequently, we, our product has evolved um, to a stage today where we have over 800 operators uh, using the very matrix product, and 700 of those are IP enabled. The other 100 are pure one-way DVB. Mm -hmm. um, most of them have um, aspirations to deploy hybrid networks, so using one-way DVB and the advantages of hybrid IP. And, and so what we have uh, here at the show is something called the Verspective Intelligence Center, uh, which will... And that's Verspective with a V. V, as in yes. Veron uh, yes. As in uh, Verimatrix. Uh, as in Verimatrix, um, pun intended. And the Verspective Inte Intelligence Center will allow operators globally to opt in, connect into the respective intelligence center, and with that, we'll be able to provide um, a whole multitude of um, value-added services to our operators, uh, but it starts first and foremost with operational excellence. So monitoring of system performance, monitoring of piracy and breach attempts, which can be very, very quickly um, combated and eliminated before they even spread. Um, if we're seeing footprints and patterns within our operator community that's telling us that, um, that the bad guys are, are trying to break in. And, and let's face it, that's what is happening today in real time. Um, what we don't know is what we don't know is how many um, networks are being attacked at any given time. But what we will be able to do with perspective is very quickly detect that and combat those, those threats. Plays in again to the requirements for, for UHD security, uh, the requirements on watermarking, um, the use of trust zone technology um, to be able to uh, deliver content securely to OTT devices, but all that then ties back into the Perspective Intelligence Center, which will be a 24-7 a uh, operation center that, that Very Matrix will be offering to its customers. Now, how will that work as far as any given customer will just rely on that cloud collection uh, in, your, uh, in your facilities uh, of, of the data that is relevant to their um, footprint and service uh, reach, 
and, and then you'll feed that data out to them? Or will they position this capability within their own data centers? Well, it, twofold actually, yes. They, they, they will continue to have um, their own local Verimatrix VCAS installations and those installations will, will uh, secure their networks and allow them to um, very clearly manage their own right. services. And then the Respective Intelligence Center is an opt-in uh, facility that allows them to connect globally with this system. Um, we announced here at, at the show our acquisition of a, an analytics platform for, from Concurrent Computing and that analytics platform will be fully integrated with the, <coughs> excuse me, with the respective intelligence center uh, to the extent that now we have, we're able to have data from every single end device. So now it's not device. just about security, it's about performance overall. Well, it's about performance and security and the tie-in of that, but it's also about monetization, right? Uh -huh. I mean, we, we talk about revenue security and we, we've been talking about revenue security for five, six years now, and, and, and it's with a very clear purpose, which is find ways to not only secure um, our customers' content and services, but also find ways for them to better monetize it. And, and so if, if we're able to provide data to our customers based on the data that we can see at the end user that enables them to better monetize content, then it's a much, uh, I'd say, more compelling package rather than just a, a point security solution. Looking at this transition that we're going through now um, and, and the broader applicability of, of, of the specifications as recommended by Cable Labs, uh, Cable Labs, by Movie Labs, um, the, the question I have as, as, as you look at this and it's uh, application beyond watermarking is um, it really gets into things like the root of trust aspects yes. that you brought up with uh, Trustonic uh, that the fact that uh, now to serve these devices the service provider is going to have a role and be responsible uh, for yes. for making sure that those things are enforced before they're just sending out the content. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and that's that's where the very matrix multi-right solution really comes into play. Um, something that we introduced probably seven years ago yeah. as we saw this market start to fragment. And you know, there's good news and bad news if you like. The, and, and we'll start with the bad news is the market has actually started to fragment even more today. Okay, so, so you're seeing these silos develop in terms of the, the security that you're able to use depending on the device and depending on the, uh, the, the browser that you're using as an example, right? And so Verimatrix invented something called multi-rights, which was specifically to provide a platform and a framework that would enable an operator customer to be able to plug in any DRM that is required on those networks, but to manage it from a, a single head end. Okay, and, and that's, that's quite a, a mammoth task in its own right, but as I mentioned, we've been doing it for, for six years. We also have the advantage that our roots are in IP, right? So we're coming from an IP-centric way of looking at the, the world of video entertainment. And, and so being able to create this framework and plug something in as, as the requirements come down the pike have, have enabled us to very quickly uh, help our operate to stream their oper operation and one more time secure their revenues right so we're offering not only native very matrix uh, we have Microsoft Play Ready we have Google Widevine um, and Apple Fair Play streaming um, all from a single head end all from one management console as you look at the general uh, uptake on going back to UHD and 4k uh, you're, you're working under the radar with a lot of companies um, how do you see that rollout going now? I mean, now the security ideas and the and the technology platforms are are, are pretty much in place. The question is, um, you know, who's going to use it, and and is that content going to start to flow? Uh, do you see people preparing to take it more seriously as 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 a content opportunity? Yeah, I I firmly believe that towards the second half of next year. Uh, we'll see a lot more in terms of true UHD uh, rollout. 
um, the chipsets are available, the set-top boxes are becoming available, and, and really UHD comes into play on, on, on the big screen, yeah. right? I, the, there's not, frankly, in my own opinion, there's not a lot of point having UHD on a, on a tablet device. I, I don't think that's what it was designed for. So as, as the uh, chipsets become available, the new chipsets all have hardware root of trust capabilities. Um, we have fully implemented uh, not only the hardware root of trust, but we're available uh, on all major chipset uh, vendors natively uh, with our video mark watermarking technology. So the operator has the peace of mind if they buy a mainstream um, set-top box using a, a mainstream system on a chip, that that system will not only be pre-enabled for very matrix encryption and subscriber management, but also pre-enabled for forensic watermarking. So there's no reason not to use it anymore. It's it's available today. And and, and I guess I, I guess as an ancillary point, I would suggest that uh, a lot of operators have been very much impressed by high dynamic range technology, HDR, yes. and and how um, that that is now becoming intrinsic to their H UHD rollout plans, and oh by the way, to applications in the HD realm as well. Right. Um, and and my my thought is that the, move, the studios certainly and probably other content providers will treat HDR as every bit as needing protection, watermarking protection as uh, UHD. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So, so that's another piece that yes. says to the operator, you, you've got to have this stuff built in. Correct. And ready to go. Correct. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of it has to do with future proofing your, your system as well, yeah. right? Because so everybody's talking about cutting back on the boxes, but this is one area you don't want to save on. That is <laughs> definitely not the area to save. Yeah, yeah. Well, Steve, I thank you very much for the time. It's been great talking with you as always. My pleasure, Fred. Thank you so much. Okay.